What's up you guys, Rex here. This past week in medical school, I learned a ton about autoimmune diseases and in particular lupus. And now I finally can answer the question of why lupus is such like a running gag in house. So in the TV show House, it's sort of this constant meme trope where someone for any patient that comes in always questions, oh, maybe it's lupus. And House eventually sort of is always just like, it's never lupus. And there's a point where he actually shows that he stashes some of his drugs in the like cutout pages of a textbook that is a lupus textbook. And, and I think that's where the famous line, it's never lupus comes from. And so I've always wondered, why did the television show writers decide that lupus is this disease that we're always going to think maybe the patient has, but they never actually end up having? And so now I finally, as a medical student, can answer that question. So first of all, what is lupus? So systemic lupus erythematosus is sort of the prototypical type three hypersensitivity reaction. So there are generally four types of hypersensitivity reactions we talk about with autoimmune diseases. Type one is like the classic allergic reaction anaphylactic shock. Type four is where it's like T cell mediated and we think about like organ rejection. Type three is what sort of classically you think of lupus as. And so this is where your body makes antibodies that it shouldn't be making. That's part of our immune system. So antibodies are little molecules that are able to have one end of it that recognizes an antigen. And then it has another end of it that our body can recognize and know that that's something we need to like attack or get rid of. So what happens in a type three reaction is you have antibodies that are binding an antigen and then those are circulating through your body and lodging in different places and then like activating complement which is another part of the immune system and causing all kinds of problems so the important thing to understand is that you have antibodies being made they are binding to an antigen and you have these complexes of antigen and antibody that are now floating around our circulation when they shouldn't be and they get stuck places and cause problems and so they can cause problems all throughout the body so lupus is a classic example of a type 3. It also becomes a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. And this is where you have just the antibodies themselves are really causing the problem. And so one thing that happens in lupus potentially is the antibodies bind on to the blood cells. And rather than that antibody antigen complex causing problems, you can have cells phagocytose or basically just eat those blood cells right there. And that is directly the antibody causing problems. Now, what actually causes this to happen isn't totally exactly known. We generally talk about lupus as some combination of environmental and genetic factors. Sort of the going theory is that some sort of damage insult happens. It could be UV radiation is, is a theory. And so that causes cells to die. And we have now dead cells in our body and they're releasing a lot of DNA and nuclear contents and this in the setting of maybe some genetic predispositions of where the immune system is not working totally right. Ultimately, our body creates some anti-nuclear antibodies and these anti-nuclear antibodies, which are against ourselves when antibodies should be against some sort of pathogen, end up causing these type three and type two reactions. And then it is these actual reactions that are against ourselves that cause the symptoms of lupus. So why is lupus such a convenient disease to depict in a television show as something it might always be? First of all, lupus is pretty rare, but not incredibly rare. It happens in about 10 to 400 per 100,000 people, give or take. And there are some significant disparities of where it's much more common in women than men, like 10 to 1. And there are some racial and ethnic disparities, but overall it can happen in pretty much anyone. And so there's no immediate exclusion of it can't be lupus based on what actor you've cast for this role. And it's generally most common in like women of childbearing age so that might fit nicely with some other character you want to cast in a television show where it's convenient. So it's not super common, but it's not ridiculously rare that it's comical you would ever include lupus in your differential diagnosis in this television show. The next biggest reason is that lupus is very difficult to diagnose in many cases. That lupus can present in a very wide range of different ways. It can also have points where it gets worse and then it gets better. It also can be mimicked by a lot of diseases. And really when it comes down to diagnosing it, the sort of classical way lupus has been diagnosed is by having like four out of 11 of these criteria. So there are a lot of different criteria. Some of them are skin related, such as different rashes 
or having ulcers in your mouth or having sensitivity to sunlight. Additionally, there's a lot of different organs that can be impacted from your kidneys is very common from that antibody antigen complex getting stuck in your kidneys once trying to filter things. You can also have damage to your joints. That is a potential symptom of lupus. You can have neurological complications like seizures or different psychoses, and I think that's something that is convenient to write into a television series. And then you also can have several different results from lab tests related to different blood findings or immunologic findings, and then you also can test for antibodies. And that last test for antibodies is also why I think it's sort of a convenient disease for a television series in that there are blood tests for anti-nuclear antibodies that is very sensitive for lupus. And so when I say sensitive, it means that if you test negative for these anti-nuclear antibodies, you can pretty much rule out lupus. However, if you test positive for those anti-nuclear antibodies, the test isn't super specific. So you still might not have lupus even if you're positive, but if you're negative, you probably don't have lupus. And so this is something that is just a convenient writing tool of where if you are done with your plot thread of it could be lupus, you just have them have a negative test to anti-nuclear antibodies. If you still want it to be in there as a potential cause, you have them test positive, and now the doctors still have to keep looking and still have to understand. And ultimately what makes lupus so difficult to diagnose is that it's really a diagnosis of exclusion. You have to rule out every other possibility in order to be able to definitively say lupus because the symptoms are so wide-ranging, impacting so many different organ systems potentially, and does not have the same presentation in any two similar people, which makes it a very difficult disease. Thankfully, I know that there's been great progress in treating it. That's something I don't exactly know how to do yet, but I'm really looking forward to it, and I have a great appreciation for rheumatologists who take care of people with lupus and other very complicated autoimmune diseases. So I look forward to learning about more of that cool stuff. And if you wanna catch more of these videos where I share interesting things that I've learned in a week of medical school, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. I also have tons of videos on the medical school application process. So check those out in my channel as well. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear about them down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, and until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.